here we have with us R.K. Barrett telling us about her book, Ruby Joins the Choir. Officially, I've been speaking to you guys as you come in. Uh, thank you first for being here. Uh, this means a lot to me. This is my home. You guys are my family. And so I'm very, very excited to have my first book signing and book event and book reading here uh, in person at, at home. So um, I want to go ahead and just kind of get into everything because I know we have two sessions in a limited time. Um, and I know it's Saturday and everybody's got some shopping to do. <laughs> but uh, just to talk a little bit about myself, this is my first children's book. I'm a new children's book author. Um, I am traditionally published by Twin Attic Publishing House. Um, you guys actually are in, in luck because my publisher is here. <laughs> and the support me they have are put on the spot. Get me <laughs> but um, just a, a quick background that I can share because I am here at home and I would like to share. Um, I wrote this book uh, a couple years ago, um, and it was near and dear to me, and it was my first one, so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is it good, is it not? And I knew that if anyone knew books, it was my grandpa. <laughs> he doesn't like me put on the spot, but I could do that at home. Um, and all he ever, all he's ever done growing up is just read books and take naps. He you knows just like me. So I just thought, if anybody can look over this book, I don't want to share it. I just want my grandpa to read it. And so he read it and he liked it. So I said, well, it must be good. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm standing here in front of you today because it's a great book and I'd just like to share it with you. So I'm going to read it just um, really quickly um, to you guys. And then I will ask some questions to the kiddos in the room. <laughs> so the book is called Ruby Joins the Choir. Early one Sunday morning, Ruby and Grammy got dressed in their fancy hats and dresses and drove to church. Ruby was very excited and happily home during the entire ride. I'll show you guys pictures. I know we like pictures too, right, adults? <laughs> As they approached the church doors, Ruby could hear loud voices singing beautifully. When the doors opened, Ruby realized it was a church choir creating the sweet melody. Ruby sat through church daydreaming and imagining herself singing on stage. What if that was me singing with the choir, she thought. Ruby could hardly wait for church to end so she could tell Grammy how much she enjoyed listening to the choir. Grammy, Grammy, how can I sing like the choir? Ruby, honey, I'm a bit tired. Let's talk when we get home and you've changed out of your dress, Grammy replied. Excited. Ruby rushed into her room when they arrived at the house. She quickly changed out of her Sunday outfit and into her pajamas. Ruby ran into the living room and found Grammy sitting in her favorite rocking chair. What is it, child? What has gotten you so worked up and excited, Grammy asked. Ruby looked up at Grammy with a huge smile and asked, Did you hear the choir today at church? Did you see the way they swayed? Why, yes, Grammy replied while smiling. The choir sang beautifully today. Ruby began to jump up and down with glee. She looked up at Grammy and said, I want to join this choir, Grammy. Can I please? Oh, Ruby, that would be great. Are you sure that you would like to sing with the choir at church, she asked. Ruby grabbed Grammy by the hands and pulled her off her rocking chair. They joyfully laughed and spun around the room like a carousel as Ruby sang, I do, I do, I do. But, Grammy said with her finger in the air, Ruby, we have a few steps to take before joining the choir. What do we need to do, Grammy? asked Ruby. First, we must let Miss Horn know that you would like to join the choir. She is the lady that plays the piano. We can meet her on Wednesday night when the choir has practice. That night, Ruby sang herself to sleep. She was anxious for Wednesday to come. She knew that she would be well because she's always sung for family and friends. Some of us, we always sing in the shower, but when we go outside, we don't want to sing. 
The next morning, Ruby sang as she got ready for school. She hummed a tune on the bus ride to school. And she daydreamed about singing in the choir during class. During the bus ride home, the bus driver could hear Ruby humming. He told her that she had a very nice voice. Ruby thanked him and told him that she was going to sing in her church choir. I know you will do great, he shouted as he drove off. Later that night after dinner, Grammy heard Ruby singing in the bathtub. Ruby was singing one of her favorite songs while imagining herself on a big stage with bubbles everywhere. Tuesday morning, Ruby woke up ready to take on the day. She sang and sang and sang all day long. When she got home, she hurried to eat her dinner and skipped off to bed. Why are you moving so fast, child? Grammy asked. Grammy, if I hurry and get to bed, it will be Wednesday soon. And you know what that means, Ruby replied. Grammy smiled and confirmed. Yes, Ruby, I do. Well, good night then, kiddo. Finally, it was Wednesday morning, and Ruby jumped out of bed to get ready for school. She spent the whole day practicing the song she wanted to sing for Miss Horn. She practiced while feeding the fish. She practiced doing recess. Ruby practiced while watering the classroom garden. That morning, Ruby burst through the front door of her house. Ruby dropped her book bag on the floor and ran into Grammy's room shouting, Grammy, Grammy, it's time to practice with the choir. At five o'clock, they jumped in Grammy's bright red car and sang a joyful song all the way to church. When Ruby walked into the church, everyone was excited to see the young girl who was eager to join their choir. Miss Horn welcomed Ruby and asked her to sing a short song. For the first time ever, Ruby felt nervous to sing. She didn't know why she felt that way. Ruby looked around at all the smiling faces, expecting her to sing. Her eyes were wide open and she felt sweat beads forming on her forehead. She opened her mouth to sing and nothing would come out. Ruby felt like me because I've got sweat beads. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy took Ruby by the hand and began singing the song they had been singing in the car. I am who I am and I can be anything with you, oh Lord, you guide me. Ruby joined in with a shy, shaky voice. Oh, Lord, please lead me, guide me through. Then the horn began to play the melody for the song on the piano. Ruby's voice began to get stronger, and the choir joined in singing softly in the background. She was feeling it then. She was very big. <laughs> Suddenly, Ruby belted out with a strong, beautiful voice. Her voice was so sweet that it amazed the choir, and they stopped singing. Everyone began to clap for Ruby. Grammy was so proud of Ruby. She hugged her and whispered in her ear, Great job, sweetheart. Remember, whenever you feel shy, to just open your heart and sing. Ruby gleefully practiced during the rest of the week. Oh, she's got it now. So she's ready now. She sang while painting Fluffy's nails. Poor, poor Fluffy. She practiced while Grammy did her hair, and she hummed while she washed the dishes after dinner. On Sunday, Ruby joined the choir on stage. Before she sang her song, she remembered what Grammy said. She opened her heart and sang so beautifully that everyone in the audience stood up and applauded. After church, Everyone greeted Ruby and told her what an amazing job she had done. Ruby was so happy that she could not wait until next Sunday to sing with the choir again. During the car ride home from church, Ruby smiled with glee. Grammy looked in her rearview mirror and said, You see, Ruby, with practice, 
and a bit of courage, you can do anything you put your mind to. Yes, Grammy. Ruby gasped and shouted, Up next, I joined the school play. <laughs> Grammy and Ruby laughed as they drove off into the sunset. So Ruby seemed to have a lot of fun, and at first Ruby was really, really nervous. And what did Ruby have to do to get over her nervousness? Does anybody know? Anybody? Come on, not everybody at once. <laughs> Maddie? What did Ruby have to do to get over her nervousness? What did she do to prepare herself? She practiced. She practiced. That's right. So, you know, whether we're 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, that's your <laughs> We still get nervous, you know, and we have to practice. So this story uh, is, is about bravery and finding that courage to, you know, pursue your dreams and to keep going. Um, and just like, you know, life, we are always going to come in contact with challenges and hurdles. And it's always important to remember that you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to. Oh my goodness. I guess everybody can do anything they put their mind to. So what I want you guys to take away from this is to always remember that, that you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes. Yes? Okay, do you have a question? Yes. What inspired you to become an author? Yes, so what inspired me to become an author is, is I've always wanted to write books. I just didn't know if I wanted to do children's books or books for adults. And actually, ironically, my oldest daughter, Madison, she said she wanted to be an author. And so what I wanted to do was just kind of put myself into the fire first and just see what I needed to do in the process so that when she got ready to do it, that she would know better how to do it. And then also, I like working with youth, so I wanted to be able to encourage them. And the good thing about writing children's books is you get to use your imagination and you get to send the message in the most creative way possible and touch the masses of children, adults, and anyone. So. I really enjoy writing children's books, and that's my main inspiration. Yes? What's been your happiest moment so far? Um, well, my happiest moment so far is just watching, um, pretty much living the message that I'm sending. So watching myself um, make a plan, work the plan, and achieve the plan. So that is the happiest moment, just watching my work, watching it touch people, Seeing people that I love enjoy my work and, and even people that I don't know. So that's my happiest moment. I guess there's a lot of moments in the world. <laughs> Anyone else? So what's next? You have another book building up? Yes, so Ruby um, Joins the Choir is the first of a Ruby series. Um, and there is going to be another book coming very, very, very soon. So what do you think? Um, and, and we're actually in the works on that right now. So I can't wait. I can't tell you what it is yet, but I can't wait to present it to you all as well. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You said you wrote this book two years ago. Yes. Uh, would you share briefly with us the process on getting a book published, maybe steps or what it takes? Yes, absolutely. So, um, <laughs> Contrary to the belief, <laughs> um, when you're publishing or getting your book published, sometimes it takes a little while, um, and sometimes it could be sooner. It just really depends on uh, the process and um, the application of how you, you know, what you do and how you do it and what you can do to move it along. So um, writing the book, the manuscript, having the idea, um, it's going to have to go through um like editing, you'll meet with your publisher or your publishing company. Sometimes that takes a while, just seeking and finding a company. Um, and then also you have to do uh, like your contract, things like that. So just getting all the paperwork and things out of the way, the plans out of the way, the foundation. 
Um, and then, like I said, taking your pro your project, you editing. Um, if you have a children's book and the illustrations, just being able to um, take care of that as well. Um, and then just kind of the wait process of going through all the legalities and things like that. But um, there are so many resources for that. Um, and then also, um, like I said, I am with Twin Attic Publishing House. Um, so if you were to find like any publishing companies uh, like such, then you can, you know, look up their information. They have like resources that will walk you through that process. Um, for me, being new, uh, it was challenging because, you know, um, unlike self-publishing, you kind of have to go on the timetable of a company and go through the process with them. Um, and so it was a lot of the wait time and then just having patience and things like that. Um, the fun stuff is getting toward the end of the process, which I think most people know about. So they don't know about the, the meat and the lettuce and the tomatoes, but um, just getting toward the end of the process where you're able to see things like getting your prototypes and looking at everything and, you know, then the final product. So it's a lot that goes into it. Um, but also, if you um, have any further questions about it, I'd be more than happy to share some information with you, some resources too. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so when I got ready to write this book, um, like I said, I was kind of inspired and I said, okay, well, you know what, let me see what it takes. And it honestly just kind of came to me because I was thinking about myself, I was thinking about um, how I grew up, and I was thinking, oh, you know what, what am I going to write about? And so it kind of popped in my head, you know, uh, choir, just many, like fragments, choir, little girl, singing. And it, I just kind of mapped that out, and then I just, it just, the story just started to develop. Um, and just thinking about my life, you know, it, it, that's how I came up with it. <laughs> yeah. Who did you do illustrations? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I have a really great illustrator. Her name is Anna Chavez, um, and. She's on the book, and she did such a great job, but um, she uh, actually did the illustrations. And like I said, you can find illustrators that will illustrate your um, your book for you, give them ideas, and um, then they will kind of develop on those ideas for you. So, yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you get writing? Um, I written you know like journaling um or just other books that i maybe just didn't want to publish and stuff um i would say maybe like 13 14 you know just kind of writing stuff at first i thought i wanted to be a poet you know and that didn't work out so <laughs> you know just kind of testing out different waters one more how'd you come up with the character so the character ruby like i said i, I thought of pretty much myself, what I wanted to see when I looked at a book, when we went to, you know, to see books. And a lot of times you don't see um, many African-American um, looks on the front of the book. And for me, that was important. Um, and also just kind of mimicking after, you know, my little girls and, you know, just what they would look like, how they would, um, you know, the, their expression, um, their dreams, just kind of bringing all of that to life in the image. So that's kind of how I came up with how she looks. So thank you guys so very much for listening to my story, for listening to my um, asking me questions and taking the time with me today. Um, like I said, this one is my first book signing and reading. So please, please, please visit my table and purchase some books. And if you already have the book, thank you so much. Grab a copy on the way out and bless someone else with it. <laughs> also, um, there are little candy bags over for the kids and um, little coloring sheets. And if you guys wouldn't mind, there's a poster out front with a white space at the bottom. If you would sign your name on that, I would really appreciate that. Because I'm going to keep that because I came home for my first book and my first book signing. And you guys all showed up for me and I'm so thankful for that.